Every day we are bombarded with catastrophic warming forecasts. But don't panic. There are a lot of problems with these predictions. To understand the issues with warming forecasts, we need to look at the relation between atmospheric CO2 concentration, shown on the bottom axis, and global temperatures, as shown on the left axis. Global warming science has only settled in one sense. We have a pretty good understanding how CO2 can act as a greenhouse gas and warm the Earth, though by far less than is often advertised. According to the UN Climate Panel, man-made CO2's greenhouse gas effect on temperatures is about as shown here, rising from zero at the pre-industrial level of CO2 through today's concentration and on into this range expected at the end of the century. What we can see is that CO2, acting alone, warms the Earth only slowly, and at this rate we should see less than one degree of warming over the next century, more of a nuisance than a catastrophe. If this is true, how do UN climate scientists come up with catastrophic forecasts? They do so by assuming that our Earth's climate is dominated by positive feedbacks from things like changes in ice or water vapor that multiply the initial warming from CO2 by many times, as shown by the steeper red and orange forecasts here. This is a key point. Catastrophic forecasts do not result from the science of greenhouse gases, but from a separate hypothesis that the Earth's climate is dominated by positive feedback. This is why saying that greenhouse gas theory is settled is irrelevant to the argument about catastrophic forecasts, because the catastrophe results from positive feedback, and these positive feedbacks are far from settled science. In fact, the last 100 years or so of measurements do not support these high positive feedback assumptions. Even if we assign all of the 20th century warming, about six-tenths of a degree, to CO2, our current warming rates imply close to zero feedback. If we attribute some of the 20th century warming to measurement errors or natural causes, then man's CO2 is growing temperatures at an even slower pace. Projecting from history yields warming in this range, about a degree at most at the end of the century. Based on this analysis, it should come as no surprise that temperatures in 2007 are well below those projected by the UN in 1990. Rather than reduce their forecasts in line with actual trends, climate modelers now claim their forecasts were high because man-made pollutants, called aerosols, are masking much of the warming. As shown here, they now have forecasts that are flat in the early years to match current trends, but then shoot up to catastrophic levels later. As with feedback, we have little scientific evidence this is the case, and some good reasons to be skeptical. Catastrophic forecasts, then, have little to do with greenhouse gas theory. They rest instead on the unproven dual hypotheses of strong positive feedback combined with substantial man-made cooling that is hiding any evidence of this feedback from us. Both history and science are on the side of a simpler answer, that man-made CO2 will drive, at most, nuisance levels of warming over the next century, a signal likely to be lost in the noise of random climate variations. So don't panic.